So Black Ops Cold War has finally launched and today I'm going to show you all how to earn headshot medals really fast in the game. These are needed for many different challenges but most people probably need them for getting gold, diamond and dark matter camos in Black Ops Cold War. I know for most weapons you need to get a lot of headshots in the game and this can be very daunting. However I'm going to show you all the best class setups to use, the best maps and game modes to go on and then some excellent tips towards the end of the video for how to actually go about and complete the challenge to get these headshots done as fast as possible. So if you need those tips then make sure you stick around until the end of the video so you get the most out of this guide and that you're not messing out on any important tips. Now if you need any help with leveling up fast, doing better in the game or completing challenges easily in Black Ops Cold War or Warzone then check out my playlists with these videos on my channel. I'll have links in the description for those playlists so go and check them out if you're interested. So for example there's a Black Ops Cold War camo playlist for getting all the challenges for the weapons plus getting gold, diamond and dark matter, dark ether and those kind of camos. So if you're interested in that I'm going to have guides going up on my channel so make sure you stick around for all of those videos if you're interested in unlocking the mastery camos. Again a link for that playlist will be in the description and there'll be a card on screen if you want to check that out. There'll also be timestamps in the description for this video if you want to jump to a specific part of it. Without further ado though, let's get into the tips. So the camo challenge system in this game is very similar to that of Modern Warfare and Warzone and so if you're familiar with that system you'll be very familiar with this system too. So basically there's tiers of camo challenges grouped together based on the type of challenge and each group has to be unlocked by getting your weapon to a specific weapon level in order to start completing that challenge. So for example the stripes camos is a set of challenges and for this group you need to get headshots the number will vary depending on the type of weapon but you have to get your weapon to a specific level to start doing those challenges and the same for the other challenges as well so obviously because that's the case if you want help with leveling up your weapons fast I've got a video for that I'll leave a link in the description again and a card on screen and that'll be in the weapon camo playlist as well if you need help with that anyway the headshots are needed for a variety of weapons for the mastery camo challenges so if you're going for these mastery camos for the assault rifle you need 100 headshots for submachine guns you'll need 75 for the tactical rifle you'll need 100 for light machine guns you'll also need 100 for sniper rifles it will just be 50 for pistols it will also be 50 and then finally for shotguns it'll be 50 headshots as well so that's the number you need for each type of weapon now let's talk about the class setup quickly and then we'll go on to talk about the best maps and game modes and then finally the most important tips in game for getting the headshots done faster so I just want to say quickly that the attachments may vary slightly from class to class ie from one weapon to another it might be slightly different attachments available this is just the system in place in Black Ops Cold War so if you can't find a specific attachment I'm suggesting for the weapon you want to get headshots for just try to use the most similar attachments with the you know most similar benefits or you can try to apply the general tips from this class to your own setup of course if you want to change anything feel free to do that as well to apply it to your own playstyle. but this is just my suggestions for a class setup i'm going to talk about the perks quickly and the equipment and all stuff like that and then i'm going to talk about three example class setups for an assault rifle submachine gun and light machine gun if you want weapon attachments for other classes like using a sniper or pistol or something like that obviously just try and apply these attachments to those weapons or alternatively if enough people want it I can do a video on specifically getting you know sniper or pistol headshots or something like that if people want it but let's quickly talk about the perks so for the first perk I'd recommend putting on paranoia this allows you to hear an alert when an enemy aims at you so if they're aiming at you you're going to know and your vision pulse is also if an enemy is outside of your field of view that's looking at you so those two things will allow you to know if someone's looking and aiming at you and it just allows you to be a bit more aware so that you can turn on them and kill them before they get you I'd also recommend putting on the forward intel perk in the first category as well. This allows you to see indicators for enemy reinforcements on your minimap and also your minimap shows up larger so you're able to see the enemies better, know where they are on the map and have a better idea of where to go to get these headshots. In the second perk category I'd go for scavenger and this allows you to replenish your ammo from dead players so you can get more ammo so you don't run out but also I'd put on tracker as well which allows you to see an imprint of enemy footsteps and also aiming at enemies reveals them on your team's minimap so it allows you and others to see the enemies on the minimap which is good obviously but also like I say seeing enemy footsteps on the floor is the main thing because they show up in red and it allows you to follow them round to find where the enemies are and get headshots on them because let's say they're running one direction you happen to see the footsteps run up behind them they might not know you're there and then you can get an easy headshot as opposed to if you didn't have the tracker you wouldn't know they were there and you wouldn't be able to run up behind them and get an easy headshot so that's what it's for and then finally in the third perk category i'd go for cold-blooded which means that ai controlled school streaks don't target you and that player controlled school streaks won't highlight you you'll also be cold on thermal optics and players and vehicles won't see your nameplate it just allows you to be a little bit more hidden and less picked off by for example ai controlled school streaks because it's really annoying getting killed by helicopters and stuff like that when you're trying to focus on headshots so this just allows you to not be killed by those streaks and you know if anyone's using a thermal site or something like that you don't 
won't show up as easily and you're less likely to die from that. I'd also put on Ninja because the footsteps seem to be very loud in this game. It's really obvious where someone is. It's really obvious to hear someone and obviously it's not always obvious to know exactly where they are but you can easily hear people's footsteps and so if you put on Ninja it will quiet it down. It won't make it silent but it will make it a lot quieter and you're also resistant to like field mics when sprinting and your character will only speak when necessary. So those things help you to be a bit more quiet so that enemies are less likely to see, hear or find you and therefore you can stay alive longer and get more headshots. Now in terms of the equipment I'd put on a stun grenade or a flashbang for the tactical. What this does is it temporarily disorientates and slows movement if it's a stun grenade or a flashbang blinds and deafens enemies. For the lethal you want to avoid this, it doesn't matter what you put on because you want to avoid using it because this is going to get lethal kills, it's going to take away from your ability to get headshots so don't use it at all. And then finally for the field upgrade I'd put on either an assault pack which allows you to resupply ammo that also gives you bonus score for taking down enemies. So obviously that means A you get more ammo so you're less likely to run out but also this bonus score can help towards earning the score streaks which we'll talk about in just a second. Alternatively you can put on the field mic if you put this down it will show up when enemies are running in that vicinity it shows them up on the minimap it's easier to find them and hence it's easier to go track them down and kill them. Now obviously the caveat to this is as far as I know it only works in core it obviously doesn't work in hardcore unless there's already a UAV up and so if you're in hardcore it's probably best to go for the ammo whereas in core you can either go for the assault pack or the field mic it's up to you. If you use the field mic it's probably best to put it in an area of high traffic so an area where people are running past a lot, for example, in the corner behind the doorway, so that when someone runs past, it's easy to see them because you're going to know where they are and you can track them down again and get more kills. Now for the wild card, I've put on perk greed just so that allows you to equip an extra perk from each category. So you get six instead of three, which is why I had two in each category. But if you don't want that, if you want something else, you can put on another wild card, for example, to get more attachments or stuff like that. It's up to you. Now for the score streaks very quickly, I just want to quickly say you want to put on the spy plane, the counter spy plane and the armor. These are all what I'd call tactical score streaks so they don't help you get kills directly they they can help you indirectly get kills by finding people on the map and stuff but they don't directly get kills for you it's not going to take away from the kills you can get towards headshots so don't use lethal score streaks only use these ones okay so now I'm going to quickly go over three example class setups for the assault rifle SMG and light machine gun obviously try and apply these attachments and these tips and benefits to your own class if it's another weapon like I say again try and do the same thing or if you guys are stuck I can also do a video on it and if I do I'll put a card for that on screen so for the assault rifle I've put on first of all an optic you can put on the mill stop reflex which is quite good it's the first one I believe you can also put on the microflex LED this is probably my favorite one it's a larger sight but it's clear and the rim is very thin so that not a lot of your screen is blocked out by the edge of the optic so it's a nice clear optic a nice little dot so definitely microflex LED will probably be my first choice but if you're using it when the weapon hasn't been leveled up much or it's not much there you can also put on the mill stop reflex finally if you're on maps with slightly longer ranges or you're struggling to see the head very well you can switch to to an axial arms three times optic this is quite good as well it zooms right in and it's got a nice big crosshair on it so it's easy to see the enemy and the head you'll probably see that in some of the gameplay i find it very useful as well so it's up to you what you guys want but i imagine most people will probably like the microflex led optic if it's available for your weapon the nice thing about these optics is that most of them are available early on in early weapon level so you don't have to level it up loads to get these optics so as well as the optic i've also put on the socom eliminator as the muzzle this allows increased muscle flash concealment so you get less muzzle flash and also less vertical recoil which is good. I've also put on the SAS mag clamp for the magazine and this allows quicker reload speed and increased max starting ammo. I've then gone and put on the airborne elastic wrap for the handle and this increases your aim down sight speed and your flinch resistance so again you're able to lock onto enemies faster and less likely to flinch when they're shooting you. For the stock, I've put on the Raider pad and this allows increased sprint to fire speed and aim walking movement speed. So again, you can just be a bit quicker aiming down sight. It allows you to get kills a little bit faster and it gives you a little bit of an advantage over the enemy. So that's quite a decent setup for the assault rifle. For the SMG, my example class setup would be something like the SOCOM Eliminator muzzle again, the 9.5 inch Task Force barrel. This increases the damage, the effective damage range and the bullet velocity. So obviously that's useful because SMGs have a shorter damage range normally. I've then put on the field agent grip. This allows less vertical and horizontal recoil which is good and then again also I put on the SAS mag clamp for the magazine and the airborne elastic wrap for the handle and then for the light machine gun I've put on an optic again the SMG I didn't think it needed it because you're getting closer to the enemy with SMGs than you are with assault rifles or other weapons but for the LMG I think you need an optic probably you can put on the mill stop reflex or the axial arms 3x you can also put on like a holographic sight if you want as well but those are probably the best two so for the other attachments I put on the field agent grip for the underbarrel the salvo 125 round fast mag this allows increased ammo starting ammo and a faster reload speed which is good i've then also put on the airborne elastic wrap 
for the handle and finally I put on the radar pad for the stock. These attachments generally allow you to aim down sight faster, be more accurate and have less recoil, have more ammo if you need to, reload faster, all the properties you need to be getting more headshots and kills in the game. Try and apply those attachments and those tips to your own weapon class and if you need a specific video for a specific type of weapon I'll do that if it's requested. For the game modes I recommend playing free for all because it's close quarters combat i.e there's lots of enemies in a close amount of space. Everyone's an enemy as well, every single person on the map is up for grabs in terms of headshots so that's the main mode I like at the moment and you can play this in either hardcore or core really. The thing with core is that you're more likely to get a headshot if you're aiming at the head because with hardcore although it's easier to get the kill sometimes if you accidentally shoot a bullet slightly lower down on the head you might kill them just under the head so it doesn't count as a headshot unfortunately and then they're already dead whereas with the core it takes longer to kill someone so you can more accurately adjust your aim if you need to shoot higher to shoot at the head because I often find in hardcore even though I'm getting kills a lot quicker sometimes I'll accidentally shoot slightly under and not hit the head so it's up to you really hardcore was really good for me probably most of the gameplay you're seeing will be in hardcore but core can also be good it's up to you guys but free for all definitely one of the main modes and then also domination because the spawns don't flip it's easier to get closer to the enemies or you can flank around the enemies to get behind them for easier headshots and there's a higher chance of finding inactive players in the spawns as well so that's useful so definitely one of those two modes would probably be the best modes to go for in terms of headshots at the moment but obviously that could change if they add other game modes in the future in terms of the maps there's unfortunately not many to choose from there's currently only eight maps at launch which is quite disappointing and so some of them are not great but the best ones so far for headshots the top five i'd say are probably checkmate crossroads as well especially on the smaller version not on the bigger ones with more players but obviously in the smaller 6v6 modes that's perfect also garrison can be quite good moscow and then finally satellite as well these can all be good maps for headshots but obviously it depends on the type of weapon so for example satellite might be better with like snipers or tactical rifles or something like that because you've got longer range engagements and obviously maps where you're closer together such as you know crossroads checkmate that might be better for the more close quarters combat weapons like pistols smgs and stuff like that and assault rifles can go between so it doesn't really matter too much so those are the best maps and obviously try to vote for these maps or get into lobbies with these maps if you're getting into other maps that are crap obviously just back out of them and go into another lobby to try and get these maps over time obviously more maps will be added and so if there's a new map added that you find you get a lot of kills on or and there's lots of close quarters combat or if they release original maps from the previous cods that are good for example let's say they brought back firing range or something like that try to get into these maps or mosh pits with these maps so definitely they add new maps which are good try and go for those obviously but for now these are the ones that are available in the game and also i know that late november nuketown will be out so if you're watching this after that point then obviously nuketown's a great map to go for headshots as well so trying to get into maps like nuketown or mosh pit modes with these if possible every now and then they'll have nuketown 24 7 and other kind of map playlists so if you've got nuketown 24 7 definitely try and go for that and go for other small maps if you can okay so that was the class setup the game modes and the maps now let's talk about the important tips for the game for getting headshots once you're actually in the game so first of all this may sound kind of obvious but you need to actually aim for the head you need to aim for where either you see someone's head or where you expect someone's head to be let's say if you're running around the corner you want to be aiming at eye or head level so that when someone comes around to you their head will be in line with your crosshairs and you can easily then aim down sight and shoot them as opposed to if you're just sort of looking anywhere and you run around the corner a you're gonna have to adjust to it if someone's there but also you'll then have to aim for where the head is and that takes longer and you're more likely to die so aim for where the head is or where you expect someone's head to be don't rush too much when trying to get these headshots and try to line up the shot if possible so don't rush to try and just get the kill anyhow because often you'll then miss the head and you'll shoot somewhere else and it won't count whereas if you took slightly longer to line up the shot for the head if it's possible then obviously you can go for that and get a headshot you also probably want to adjust your sensitivity or aim down sight sensitivity as well if needed to either make it higher or lower so if you make it too low it's going to take much longer for you to turn around to aim at the enemy and get your crosshair onto the head whereas if you make it too high you can often overshoot and that will mean that your crosshairs will often go past their head and you have to then go back to try and get it so you want to get that sweet spot between the high and low sensitivity for me personally in this game i find that about 8.8 8 or 8.7 in terms of horizontal and vertical sensitivity is the best. You can either leave the aim down sight sensitivity where it is or make it slightly lower. It's up to you but obviously this depends on your playstyle. You just need to adjust it so that it's right for you. So definitely that's an important point. If it's not right you're going to make it much more difficult for yourself to get headshots. If you find you're struggling with headshots as well you can also warm up in custom games with bots if you're struggling. So set up a private match in one of the maps you're best with. Put on some bots. Put on your class setup that you're going to be using and then start practicing with it. You know, Once you get better with killing bots and getting 
headshots, you can obviously turn up the difficulty. And then when you find that you're getting better at it, you can then try and hop into multiplayer and apply those tips to the game. Because if you just find you're getting killed a lot without even being able to get any kills or headshots, it can make it a lot more difficult. So if you need to, definitely recommend warming up in custom games with bots. A slower playstyle may also help for this game. It doesn't seem to be as bad as Modern Warfare, but the faster you run around, the less likely you are to get kills, obviously, because uh, some people are likely to be taking it slower. Unfortunately, you still get a bit of camping. It's probably not as bad as Modern Warfare, but it can be annoying at times. So a slower playstyle may help. So obviously you want to be getting to the enemies as fast as possible, but don't rush around like a headless chicken. Aim down sight when going around corners and stuff like that, and you should be able to get more kills and obviously more headshots through that method. Also, like we said in the class setup, make sure you're using stun grenades or flashbangs to stun or confuse the enemies, which immobilizes them and makes them an easier target for you getting headshots on them. You also want to watch your mini map and UAV, and if you've got a field mic, use that as well. And also there's like a wraparound compass type thing around the mini map. It's like a bar around the edge of the mini map, which will show in what direction the enemies are in addition to obviously where they are on the map and again use all these bits of information obviously footsteps listen out for that as well and all this information put it together to try and find out where enemies are go towards them and obviously try and get more kills so obviously that's why it's important to have uav on the field mic and stuff like that you also want to be looking out for enemies in windows or doorways or behind cover or you know prone the reason for this is because it can be easier to aim for the head so you know if someone's in a window it cuts off half their body it's much easier to just aim for their head and kill them the same for if they're behind cover same kind of thing but also if someone's looking out through a window or a doorway that means they're exposed from behind because they're focusing on what's in front of them so obviously you can come around behind them if you see someone in a window or in a doorway or something like that and it just makes it easier to come around and get the headshot on them finally if there's anyone prone if they're looking straight ahead of you obviously the first thing you can see is their head so aim for that and it should be a lot easier just things like that to watch out for can help getting headshots a little bit easier you also want to be checking spawns as well because every now and then you'll get an inactive player which has gone off to do something their character's just sitting there you can easily just walk up to them and get headshot on them it makes it a lot easier you'll be surprised how often that happens Happens. It can happen in free for all, but obviously you're less likely to find the person because there's more enemies. But in most like domination, the spawns don't really flip, and so you can come round to them, get into their spawn, and find an inactive player and kill them that way to get a shot. So that obviously can just make it a little bit easier. Obviously, it's a little bit of cheat, but it doesn't matter because it helps you get your headshots faster. And finally, I'd recommend just putting on the tracker perk, like I said, just to help you find enemies, look for those footsteps, and if you see them, obviously go towards them and try and get headshots on them from behind. So that's all the tips to get headshots faster in Black Ops Cold War. If you found this useful, be sure to leave a like on the video it really helps and feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on any upcoming black ops cold war or warzone videos i've got lots of camera guides lots of challenge guides and lots of tips and tricks guides as well so obviously you want to be sticking around for those if you're going to find them useful and obviously feel free to check any of them out if you're interested there'll be playlists for those in the description and the videos will be on my channel as well so if you're interested definitely recommend going to check that out there'll be links in the description like i say and a card on screen but thank you so much for watching i hope you found it useful and i will see you all on the next video